Do not miss your hour of visitation. As a child, you could always feel your parents' eyes on you when they were watching you. You knew when you were in their crosshairs. As children, we could feel our parents' eyes piercing right through us as if to warn us that impending danger was about to happen if we didn't straighten up. So let's talk about a thing. So let's not act like we can't feel the Lord's eyes beaming down on us as if to warn us that he's watching us and he's about to deal with what he's seeing. All that time, it seemed like he was quiet. He wasn't dealing with the things that we now made commonplace. But deep down, we know it's not right at best and at worst is sin. As we look through history, the Lord always gives people time to reckon with sin. He corrects us through the Holy Spirit, bringing conviction. But if we ignore the spirit over time, it becomes stubborn sin. But we are never getting away with it. It is always an appointed time of visitation by the Lord to deal with our stubborn sin. So today we're going to be looking at how this concept is in the Bible and how it pertains to us, his people, his bride, the body of Christ, his church today. So let's look at Mark 11. The triumphal entry has just taken place when Jesus is coming into Jerusalem on a donkey and the people are worshiping who they now know as the Messiah. Mark 11, 11 says Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. So Jesus looked around at everything everything. He saw everything. And Jesus, being that it was already late, went on with the 12 to minister at Bethany. But in his mind and in his heart, he knew he'd be back and he'd deal with all the stubborn sin that he saw. It was like Jesus was saying, I'll be back and I will deal with this. And in Mark 15 through 18, Jesus returns to the temple to deal with the dishonor and the sin. Mark 11, 15 through 18 says, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple court. And as he taught them, he said, is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. So let's look at a few of the key words. Drive out means to force something out. And then the other word that we saw was overturned, to appeal or to abolish, to overthrow. Jesus came back to the temple as a judge to render judgment on the priests and the congregants of the temple. The scripture tells us that he was teaching them. So as he was overthrowing their blatant sin, he was showing them why he was overthrowing their tables. He tells them that the house where they meet and where the presence of God meets them is supposed to be a house of prayer for all nations. But they turned it into a place of exchanging funds, selling things and robbing people. They had gotten so far from the purpose of the temple that now he, Jesus, had come to pronounce judgment on the house. We also find in this account of Luke that right after the triumphal entry, Jesus draws near to the city of Jerusalem and begins to weep over the city. Luke 19, 41 through 44 says, Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. 
Jesus came as the Savior Messiah to awaken a people to receive him as a Savior that would forever atone for their sins, but they did not receive him. They rejected his words. They rejected him. And he knew that there would be judgment for their sin and rejection. And he wept over their disobedience. They did not receive him as a prince of peace because they did not heed the warnings. They would eventually face destruction. They missed their hour of visitation by the spirit of God. Can you sense the visitation of the Lord? Can you feel the eyes of the Lord upon you? Church, are you aware that Jesus is in the temple and he is overturning and overthrowing all your money changing, all your money extortion, all your commerce gimmicks in his temple? How far have we fallen as the house of God? How far have we gone to become a house of den of robbers and businessmen? The house was for prayer. Our hour of visitation is here and he is overturning the tables of gain. He will not allow us to carry anything through his temple. The grand efforts are starting to fail and crumble and his true church is getting back to prayer. God is plucking up and tearing out and extracting and pruning his church of dead religious nothingness. He is stirring up his faithful and their feet for their feet to be fitted with the readiness of the gospel. He is putting his believers in motion instead of pew bench warmers. He is making disciples of his people. Like it or not, he is in the temple and you are not in control and I am not in control of what happens at our time of visitation. You do not get to stop the King of Kings from overthrowing our man-made structures, ideas, policies, and gimmicks. After the visitation comes judgment, a judgment to lovingly correct us, to get us prepared. The best thing we can do in this hour is to obey and to listen and to let God tear down whatever he will, because whatever is left after the shaking will be restored, will be strengthened. God's judgment is always out of love and mercy. He is so merciful to those he loves. So he gives warning after warning and then he brings judgment. And even in the judgment is love. How beautiful is that? So beautiful. Be keenly aware of the hour of his visitation in the temple and in the temple of the churches of the earth. As his people, we must humble ourselves and submit to his teaching and to his preparation for what is next. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Likewise, we need to be aware of the hour of visitation of our personal visitation from the Holy Spirit as he moves in us to bring conviction and correction to our hearts, our minds and our souls. We must not miss the visitation of God. In taking a look around our temples, God will come in and take inventory of what we've been doing, what we should not be missing is this hour of visitation, lest he has to come back and clean house. The Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he may do the same thing in us, through us, by the Holy Spirit. He will overturn and he will teach us what is sin in our lives and in our hearts. This is his love towards us to correct us and to warn us before destruction, before it falls upon us. If we choose not to heed his warnings, then destruction comes. We need to be aware of the hour of our own personal invitations by the spirit of God. So I wanted to encourage each and every one of you today to be aware of the hour of visitation of the Holy Spirit, of the presence of God in his churches and in us to correct us, to mold us, to make us into what he wants us to be. We should not be afraid to let go of man-made things, man-made ideas, man-made gimmicks, man-made plans. We should really be compelled to let those things go and put our hands in the Lord's hands and let him have his way and his will in our lives. I pray that this message encouraged you today. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I pray that you be blessed and that your family be blessed. God bless you.